Today, I'm going to build and test five LEGO submarines using different methods to see which ones will ultimately survive in an underwater simulation. Welcome to our underwater observatory. The first submarine we're going to test is our control, and this one is just simply built up using multicolored bricks. It even has a little tiny camera inside so we can see if our test dummy survives. To power this first one, I'm just going to connect this old LEGO boat motor, which is completely waterproof. Our submarine, however, has no waterproofing, so we'll see how this goes. The first test up is the depth test. We're going to see how deep it can go before it completely fills up with water. And we're going down. Uh oh. <laughs> wow. Immediately filled with water. <laughs> I mean, Legos aren't watertight at all, so I don't know what I really expected, but I'd give the depth test maybe a 1 out of 10. Not the best. Next up, we have the movement test. So its ability to move forward in the water. And for that, all we gotta do is pop on our little turbine in the back here. Let's see if this thing can actually go forward. This is a pretty powerful propeller, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it moves. <laughs> the propeller definitely works. It'll move it through the water, but it's not super balanced. For the propulsion, I'd have to give this one an 8 out of 10. That's actually pretty good. And finally, we have the vortex test. So we're gonna turn on our turbulence generators here. Let's see how this works. Sink them down. Oh, okay. Well, that toppled upside down immediately. I'm gonna have to upgrade this tank for the next test, but overall for this submarine, I'm gonna give it a 5 out of 10. The propulsion for this one did the best, but the entire interior filled with water, so let's see if we can do better on the next one. For each of these submarines, we're gonna test a different propulsion method to make it go forwards, and then we're gonna test out different waterproofing methods for the inside of these so they won't just fill completely with water. This next submarine I'm gonna build is going to use flippers to actually propel it forward, and then to waterproof the interior, I'm taking an idea from one of you guys. I'm gonna use modeling clay around the seams on the inside of the submarine. I think this might work pretty well. First, we just need to build up the base around this control station, which has to fit on the inside. And so for the walls, I'm going to use these large Lego panels, because less seams means less places we're going to have to put clay to keep the water out. Then for the window on the front, we can connect our little dome window right here. And so what we'll do before we actually put this in the water is just make a little line of clay around this guy, and we can push it into place. A couple things we're going to need are a battery box, and then two motors, one for each side. Since these guys are so small, we can just stick them out the sides in this little two stud gap like this. So we just got to kind of build up a little base for those so we can connect the flippers to the outside of this. I also added a simple little switch in between the two motors that they're both spinning opposite directions so we can go forward or backward. We just got a few more things to jam in here. One of them is going to be this Lego LED light strip here. So if we plug these into the battery box, as you can see, they light up pretty good. Since we're gonna have our little mini camera in here, we wanna make sure that this thing has enough light. But so far, that's looking pretty good. It's gonna be a really cool view from the inside. Basically, each of these submarines is built in two parts. You have the box on the inside, and then the design on the outside. And now that we got our inner box built up, we just need to build propellers and then build the case on the outside of this to make it look good. And to build the flippers, I'm gonna use some of these pieces. I think if we just stack up three of these, we can connect these to a central axle and make a little pin wheel. I think we should make each one of these a little bit wider so it can push more water. But this concept might actually work, so let's build up one more of those. Now we just gotta build up the outside of the submarine. And for that, I think I'm gonna use yellow. Basically for the outside of this, we just wanna build up a tube shape around what we already have. Once we finish building that up, we'll put our layer of clay around the edges on the inside and then we can actually test this thing out. So here we have our flipper submarine. As you can see, I've taken off the flippers, and we've covered all the gaps on the inside with this blue clay to hopefully keep the water out. So what we're gonna do is put our little camera on the inside, and then we're gonna close it up. And the final thing we're gonna do is turn on our lights like this and pop on the lid. hey oh. <laughs> Hopefully that'll be water time. So we're gonna start with the depth test. I'm entirely nervous that this is just gonna fill with water, but I guess that's what we're here to do, test this. So here we go. See how deep we can get it before it fills. Hey, actually, okay, this air bubble's coming out, so that's not great, but that doesn't mean the inside's filling. I don't think it's filling up. It's still recording, but we, we lost the visual. <laughs> okay, so we got it all the way down to the bottom. As you can see, that air is making it really, really tough to actually pull this thing down here. Oh, oh no, the winch came off. Is there water on the inside? Well, okay, it, it did fill up. I was really confident. I, I, I didn't see much water. It's only half full though, as you can see. For the depth test, I'm gonna rate this a three out of 10. The motors are still going, so that means we can still do the propulsion test. I'm gonna pop on our little flippers here in each one of those motors. Put a little rubber piece back on. Uh-oh, we lost one motor, guys. That's all right, we still have one. Let's see if this thing can actually move in the water. Here we go. Okay. Well, hey, I mean, 
I mean, one of the flippers is working to move it. I think the other one just got so waterlogged that it just died. It just wants to rise up to the top, but it is moving from side to side. So I'd say for the propulsion, I gotta give it a seven out of 10. If the other one worked, it would um, work a lot better. But as you can see, it's just this one that works right now. Next up, let's test its control with the turbulence. So let's see if it stays upright. How do we do here? Hey, okay, that's a good sign. It's not flipping upside down. I'm gonna push this underwater and just see if it fills up on the inside. There we go. Oh, that looks really cool. Even though it's filled with water, doesn't mean it's not a success, okay? This is, we're learning here. It's getting knocked around by the waves and it's staying upright. So for the turbulence test, I'm gonna give this one a seven out of 10. I mean, our test dummy is completely drowned, but overall I'm gonna rate this submarine a six out of 10. We're getting somewhere with this model. It took longer to fill up with water, which is great. And it was moving pretty good in the water, even with just one flipper. So let's build the next one. For this next one, we're gonna build a flex seal submarine. It even works underwater. It's underwater. Hopefully. And then I'm going to try and build an air pump inside the submarine to not only pump any water that gets in out, but also use that air it's pumping to actually make the submarine move. Let's start by designing the air pumps. And for those, we're gonna use these tiny little pneumatic actuators. And the cool thing about these is by pumping this in and out, we can actually move air through it, which means we can take air from outside the submarine, from the surface, and bring it down into the sub and vice versa. We just need to motorize this so that we don't have to do it ourselves. And for that, we're gonna use a little circuit cubes motor because it's very powerful. I like them quite a bit. I've been experimenting with different types of motors on this channel. The Lego ones, I'm just saying them up, they're huge. And then if we attach a few of these little wheels to a Lego axle, we can create a cam that'll rotate, and we just wanna link one end of our piston onto that. So then, if we put this guy in this side of this, we lock the other end of this piston into another Technic brick, like this. As you can see now, we turn this guy, and it opens and closes our piston, which is perfect. So now we just gotta attach our motor to the back, turn this guy on, uh, now that is very slow, so we're probably gonna need to make this go faster to pump more air. Now, as you can see, we are pumping air through here. I don't know how much propulsion this will give us, but we're gonna double it up and see what happens. All right, so now we have these all hooked up to this central tube right here, which means if we connect this guy to this, we should have a pretty powerful motor. Yeah, it's going. I do remember we tried something like this in our Lego boat testing video, and it was able to move it. It was just very slow. So underwater, let's just hope we can actually pump whatever's inside the submarine out if it gets in there. So now we have our pump. We need to design the submarine around this. So I'm gonna start by building a little control station base where we can put our camera, and they'll figure out the rest of it and build around. And in this interior, I'm gonna try and do the same thing as we did for the last one. By utilizing a bunch of these panel pieces, there's less seams to use the flex seal on. So on this one, what I wanna do is seal up these motors, and that way they don't need to be inside the box, which means we can make it a lot smaller. And then to make it so it doesn't roll in the water, I'm gonna use two of these little pneumatic air storage systems and put them kinda of as ballast tanks on the sides. We just need to make it a little bit taller. And now we just need to attach this to that and make it, oh, got a perfect placement for that. And as you can see guys, I've also added a little Technic brick right here. And that is specifically so we can stick our little tubes on the inside and glue them. So one of these is gonna pull air out and the other one we actually need to put up here because this is gonna lead up to the surface. That way we can have a constant inflow of air. So now we just gotta cap a lid on this and then we're gonna take our flex seal and paint around all the gaps on the outside. I'm thinking that should seal it up pretty good. I'm just painting over all the cracks here. We just gotta paint around these tubes here as well so that nothing gets in there. Now that we have our cabin waterproofed, we just gotta connect this to the back and make a cool little design around it. So I'm just gonna add a few simple details and we'll test it out. Guys, I just wanna mention real quick, we have these jet blocks in stock. This is a transforming buildable figure, so you can actually build him as a robot, or you can turn him into a jet. This guy comes with all the parts you need to build him, and there's even an instructional video where you can see how to put them together. So I'll link that down below if you wanna get one for yourself, or go to ublot.com. He's pretty dope. Let's get back to building these submarines. Next up, we have our pneumatic submarine. As you can see, this thing looks like a beast. Uh, it also looks very unfinished, but that's not because I ran out of time. It's just because... So everything on this is sealed except for this opening on the front so we can put our camera and our minifigure on the inside. And then I'm just gonna take a little bead of clay like last time, put that around that window, because that actually made it a lot easier. <laughs> last thing we gotta do is just pop it on. Starting up with the first test, the depth test. Setting it in the water. We're going down. Are we filling? We're not filling. Yes, this is good. Okay, you can see some bubbles and some water coming out, but the inside is still not filling. Uh oh, I just lost camera connection. I don't think it is. 
There's barely any in there, shut up. <laughs> but as you can see, we can go all the way down to the bottom. Now for the propulsion test. If you get a little zoom in on that little spigot in the back, you can see it is spitting water and air. So it's spitting the water from the bottom, which means it's actively pumping out the water, but I don't think it's pumping out at a very fast rate. <laughs> also, we lose Wi-Fi connection to our camera every time we go underwater, so I'm actually impressed that the motors are still running like this, but it does look like our waterproofing was not enough to keep the water out. I'm gonna give the depth test a five out of 10, and for the propulsion test, it's not moving at all. Zero out of 10. Let's test the turbulence. It's sort of moving. We bring the tube up. Oh, that was dumb. Oh no. No, it's going down. Oh gosh, crap. Wait, stop, 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 stop. The submarine's not doing very well, guys. I gotta be honest. While it is staying upright, I gotta give it a few points for that. So I'll give it a three out of 10 for the turbulence test. But given that it completely filled up with water, I don't know if it's a flex seal that didn't work or the clay on the front, because the clay seemed to work last time. But either way, this one overall, I gotta give a two out of 10. It didn't do great. Let's build the next one. For this next submarine, I wanna build it with spray waterproofing. That way we can essentially build it however we want and then just put a fine layer of waterproofing on the outside and hopefully keep the water out. For the propulsion system, I wanna build a large DIY propeller because the other ones have been a little bit slow. The thing is though, LEGO doesn't really make good propellers, especially that are large. So I had an idea. I was going through my collection and I found these pieces. And these are from Ninjago, they're little spinners. And what you do is you put your little minifigure in this box type thing and you seal it off with this clear cap and just kind of locks into place. And then using the piece that I don't have, you're supposed to be able to like spin it and it spins really fast. So I was thinking, let's turn this into our propeller. If we just remove our minifigure, we just have to figure out how to connect this to an axle so we can actually spin it around. We put a few of these little one by two lift arms with the axle holes on top of this axle. And then we grab a few of these bar pieces with these pin connectors. We should be able to connect this all together to make it work. Boom, there we go. Look how strong that is too. And then now this guy should lock in here there we go, check it out. That seems like a pretty good propeller. And to gear up so it spins faster, we just wanna make sure the large gear is connected to the motor, and then the small gear will be connected to this guy. Let's see if this works. Whoa, dude, I can actually feel the air from this. But now that we have the mechanics figure out, we can build the base for the submarine. And this one is gonna be just super simplistic because we really don't have to think about waterproofing. We're just gonna put a little layer of spray on the outside. Let's start by building another control room so the camera can go in. And then we'll just put our battery box on the back and our motor stacked on top of that so we can actually turn it on. For the windows for this, I was thinking about using these pieces. And then to connect those, I've just installed some little brackets on the front and these should be able to snap onto those just like that. We can actually do two of those on each side. And now our window's pretty strong. I'm just gonna stand this thing a little bit further and build up the walls to be high. And for the final step, now that we got our submarine all built up, it's time to waterproof it. Guys, make sure you don't forget to subscribe so you can become a member of the Brick Science Stud Army. Just click the button down below, that way you won't miss any of our future videos. Cause I'm making crazy Lego projects for the whole family every couple weeks, and you don't wanna miss them. Up next we have our spray waterproofing submarine, and I've taken the bottom off of it like this. So now all we have to do is put our minifigure on the inside, press her down. Oh wow, that's, we'd love to see that. Oh no, this isn't good. Okay, here we go, starting with the depth test. Let's see if it's gonna fill with water or not. No idea if we're filling, but it's going down. Uh-oh, right between the windows. That waterproofing spray did not work at all, dude. Look at it. We've already filled with water completely. What is the point of waterproof? I like sprayed this really, really well too, and that just leaked in right between the seams. Uh, on the plus side, it filled completely with water, so we don't need to hold it down anymore. That's a zero out of 10. So I have a question for you guys. If the propeller is bigger than the submarine, does the submarine spin or does the propeller spin? Let's test the propulsion here. Wrong way. <laughs> it moves, <laughs> but it, it's moving the whole submarine. <laughs> what the heck? It just twists the whole thing. Why does it do that? Is it because it's so big? Wow, this is really, really weird. I did not expect that at all. I just expected it to just fly, but it also <laughs> disconnected. <laughs> These submarines are not working out very well. All right, turbulence test. Let's see what happens. <laughs> hey, look, you, you can see the crash test dummy in there. <laughs> This one definitely fails the uh, turbulence test with a shocking score of one out of 10. As you see, it's just spinning in circles and it's filled with water. So anyone that would be in this is dead. One out of 10, <laughs> really bad. For the propeller on this next sub, I wanna do something kind of interesting. Instead of having just a basic propeller that spins vertically, I wanna try and recreate the Gungan submarine from Star Wars with a wavy propeller made of long sticks that spins around. Now I don't know if this will work, but it looked kind of cool. So I thought I'd give it a try. 
And then for the waterproofing on this one, we're gonna glue silicone adhesive in between the bricks. First, we need to build a propeller. And so what we need is a piece to connect all four of these flexible bar pieces like this. Something like this piece should work. So if we grab a few little axle connectors and put one on each side, we should be able to stick our sticks in the stick holes. Now that still doesn't give us like the twirly shape that we want. So if we grab a couple of these cool little super earlings, we can put some little clips on the outside. And then by attaching this to the bars, we should be able to angle them. Now we're kind of getting the DNA shape that we want. I'm just gonna add one more of those connector pieces towards the top here. I mean, it looks like it could work to me. Now we just gotta build the rest of the ship. For the main base for this, I'm gonna build it eight studs by eight studs wide. And I think that'll give us just enough room for our camera on the inside right here and some sort of minifigure to sit in front of it. And then we can make a simple waterproof box on this eight by eight plate by just adding glue to all the seams and then using more of these big panel pieces so we don't have to glue every single piece. And since I want it to look just like the Star Wars ship, I'm just gonna build a frame out of wedge plates and then we'll bulk it up from there. This is the Gungan ship. And as you can see, it has power. If we turn on the battery, and it's really big for this tank. Um, so we'll see how it does. Here we go. In three, two, one, we're going down. Is it filling with water? I don't see water in there, and we made it all the way to the bottom. Let's see if we can come back up. Uh-oh, air bubbles. There's like two drops of water. Okay, so we've made it all the way to the bottom, and as you can see, if I wave down there, you should be able to see my fingers. This thing looks like it's working pretty well. I'm gonna give the depth test an eight out of 10. Up next, the propulsion test. We just gotta turn on our little motor here. Let's see if it actually goes forward. If we let it go from the bottom, you can see it'll move up and to the left. So it does work because it wasn't doing that before. <laughs> that thing looks so sick. I'll give the propulsion test a good five out of 10. That's actually a pretty great propeller. Let's test the turbulence. I mean, it seems to be staying relatively straight and it hasn't necessarily filled with water. So that's a plus. <laughs> We kind of let it go and just kind of get sucked up in our thing here. But overall, it seems to be staying pretty flat and working pretty well. So that's not bad. I'm actually gonna have to give this one a seven out of 10. You can see if we open up the top here, there's only so much water in the interior. Like it barely filled up. All the other submarines completely submerged. So I'd say so far, this one has done the best for the waterproofing. Overall, I'll give this submarine a seven out of 10. It did pretty well. I still think the clay was the best waterproofing method just because you could really jam it in between the pieces. So if we do any more underwater Lego builds in the future, I'm gonna try and use clay on the inside to keep it together. Which means this project was a success because we actually learned something. <laughs> Huge thanks for watching, guys. Check out one of these two videos popping up on your screen. This was a really big endeavor, so consider subscribing if you enjoyed it. And I'll talk to you in the next Brick Science. See ya!